What's up friends? Welcome back to the cave today. It is Thursday and we're going to build a tilting tree and I'm going to show you how to do so. If you're new to building bows, this will be beneficial to you or if you just are curious about it, I love having you here. On Thursdays, we're doing archery tips and bow building tips. We'll make them quick videos, we'll make them informational and also entertaining, so I hope you enjoy. I really just have been blown away at all of your guys' kindness and helping me create this awesome community. So, I want to give back to you guys. I'm going to give away five free two-tone tabs. They're pretty stinking sweet tabs. And the only way to get them is through giveaways. We're not gonna sell these tabs. We only wanna give these ones away to you guys. So we're gonna give away five of them. You can choose split finger or three under, whatever you prefer. But the way to get your hand on one of these tabs is you need to do that over on Instagram. So this post right here, you can go check that post out on Instagram. I'll give you instructions on how to enter for the giveaway so that we can get you one of these tabs. I really just wanna say thank you so much. In the past six months, this YouTube channel has changed my life. It's been so fun. I've got to get to know so many of you guys and I don't know. I just, I'm just very grateful. Anyway, I'll stop, <laughs> let's get back to the video. I did a video a while ago about everything you need to know about tillering trees and tillering sticks and the difference in the two. I showed how to build this pulley system, most people call it a tillering tree, and then I also have a tillering stick that I kind of refinished. But I wanna show you if you're gonna build from the start, how to build a tillering stick, what to look out for. There's a couple things that will cause you some frustration and the bow will fall off. Also, how to do it with limited tools. So the first thing you need is some wood. It can be scrap pieces of wood or you can just go buy one two by four and you can do all of this with a two by four. The one thing you need to make sure your wood is is at least 30 inches long. That will allow you to have full length of draw on your tillering tree. The nice thing about making a tillering stick is that you don't really need any power tools. You can just do this all by hand. I'm gonna use this other piece of scrap I got to hold the bow in place. Hey, not all of you know this yet, so I have to interrupt. Power hour is something that happens the first hour after a video is posted. I hang out in the comments and comment back to every single person I can. So if you wanna to talk to me right after the video, power hour, first hour after this video is posted, comment to me and I'll be there hanging out. Subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you can be notified and watch the video in the first hour so that we can hang out. I'll see you in the comments. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this into two six inch sections. So I'll end with a 32 inch piece of wood and two six inch sections of wood. I've now got my one 32 inch section and my two six inch sections. Go ahead and mark an inch and a half down on both six inch sections. Place that inch and a half mark right where the top of the tillering stick comes and then screw the six inch sections in to either side of the tillering stick. The bow handle will rest right in the slot we just created. Now if you need a wider slot, you can always shim it out with a piece of plywood like I have over here on my tillering tree. But if you want to make it smaller, you can always slide a little piece of plywood on the inside here or use some kind of rubber or leather to fill the gap. If you're building a board bow, this method is a really good option to use two by fours or two by sixes. When we build a board bow, we often use one by twos as our bow building wood, which naturally the handle is gonna fit perfectly because it's the same width as your two by four. Now that we have the slot cut, it's time to measure our mark to be able to cut out our notches so that we can draw the bow down. Draw length is measured from the back of the bow. Each bow handle is gonna have a different level of thickness. That's why we had these an inch and a half up. An inch and a half is the most common thickness of a riser section of somebody building their own bow. Go ahead and measure out from the top all the way down, marking every single inch. Now all we need to do is cut out notches. We're gonna cut out notches that look like this. The handle is that way. So from the handle, it cuts straight out. If you cut these notches in backwards, your string's not gonna hold. You don't have to cut the notches in very far either. Just about three widths of a bow string is basically what I do. In other words, I'm gonna come in about half an inch or slightly below it. With hand tools, I just cut horizontally onto the board and then I would chisel out the other section. And if you don't have chisels, you can actually even cut at a diagonal into the board with a handsaw. Now, if we're using a hacksaw, that's not too bad. If you have a table saw with a table saw sled, you don't have to have a diagonal mark in there. You could, you could do one at 90 degrees and then do another one at 45 degrees to make that. But you can just use a table saw sled and just do two saw blade lengths of thickness about half an inch into that piece of wood. And that's gonna be plenty for you to get the bowstring in there while you're tillering. You may want to run a little bit of sandpaper on the corners here so that it doesn't cut the bowstring. But I'm all about different methods. And so another method I've seen people do is to grab a screw, screw a screw all the way in there 
there. The main thing you want to make sure is that it's a smooth shaft near the top. If the threads go all the way up to the head of the screw, don't use that kind of screw. Only use the kind where the threads stop so that you'll have a smooth area for your bowstring to go on. With this method, there's less area the string will be holding, which will cause it to wear out in that specific area a little bit faster than if you're evenly pressured along the whole edge. Plus, on top of that, a screw is not realistic of shooting. If you're shooting with three fingers, it's going to be the same width of a board, not the same as this. So the tiller will be slightly different depending on which method you choose, but it's an option if you like that. Another option I see people do is to pre-drill holes and then use a wooden dowel to stick into each hole so that they can move their, their dowel up and down depending on where they want to draw their bow to. Now there's endless mounting options for this. You could just screw it to your workbench. You could put it in a work vise. You could just set it on the ground and put two bricks against it. Whatever you have at hand, you can use to make this hold. And even if you have nothing else, you don't really need it. You don't have to have it to hold into place. This right here will hold a bow. You can draw a bow down, put it on there, draw it down to the first mark, set it back, take a look at it, see what you think, and then take it off. The other cool thing about something like this is if you have a wall you can screw into, or maybe like my last garage that was unfinished, I just had two by four studs in there. I could have just screwed this front board against that two by four stud and then screwed a couple screws into the stud and literally just set the bow in the top there and draw it down and use the stud as actually part of the tillering tree. So if you're getting into bow making for the first time, this is what I would recommend building. It just takes a few pieces of scrap wood or three dollar two by four. Once you have a tillering tree built, one of the most difficult things is to not have the handle wobble back and forth like that. How you can prevent that is either to not shape your handle so it's square until the tiller's looking great. You don't need to shape it at all until the very, very end because that's the only time you hold it to shoot. But if you've already shaped it and it's rounded or it's not fitting well, all you need to do is get some pieces of leather or rubber, anything to wedge in there on the parts that is making it wobble. And just by wedging it in, you'll get something solid so that you can draw this back without the bow twisting back and forth like that. Hey guys, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. That'd mean a lot to me. Only 10% of you are, so nine out of 10 of you aren't. And if you don't do it soon, you won't be able to say that you were part of the first 100,000 subscribers. So it really means the world to me. Blows my mind how many of you guys are here. Seriously, thank you so much. Stay, stay positive and be shatterproof. Remember, I'm for you, and I'll see you on the next video. Go make a bow. Peace.